second look at the Kia Carnival. Now, yesterday we did this video, we had about 1,600 people on during our live video, and uh, we talked about the general overview of the vehicle. We went for like 50 minutes yesterday, 51 minutes, something like that. We're gonna keep this to around a half an hour. If this video, if you're not joining us live and you see that this video is over a half an hour, we've probably either gone off topic at the end of the video or we're answering questions at that point. So we're gonna try to get everything done in the 30 minute mark. And like I said, we'll continue on if there's on topic discussions, we'll continue from there. So here's the thing with this video. They're not the most fun to watch when I show technology videos. This, this is not gonna be a super entertaining video. So I always tell people, get a beverage, get a snack, have a seat, we're gonna be a little while. But we're gonna go through, we're gonna show you in detail what this vehicle has to offer as far as safety and technology today. Now, if you wanna know about cargo space and that kind of thing, we're gonna work on a filmed video. I can tell you real quick that the uh, center row seats that in some of the international videos th that can be spun backwards, they can't, we tried that, uh, but we will be filming that video soon as well. Uh, so again, subscribe to this channel if you wanna know more about this car because we're gonna to continue to bring it in over and over and over again. All right, with all that said, if you're not live with us, you can skip ahead to the three minute mark of this video. That'll be where we talk about all the content in this uh, video. In the meantime, we're gonna let our live audience build. We'll talk about a little bit of news and notes and stuff like that. And we will jump into, uh, right here, into, I'll show you how to join us live. So here we go. Go to our YouTube channel, you're probably already there. If you refresh the page or go to the page exactly at two o'clock Eastern time, you're gonna end up with the live video sitting right there. So you can see today we have the technology kind of picture. Don't know if that'll work, but that's what it is. And we're gonna click into that for a second and we're gonna skip away from the ad for a second. Oh, we don't care about this ad. Here we go. This ad actually annoys me, so we'll show you that in a second. All right, skip that ad. There we go. So if one real quick thing, if you're looking to buy and you're in Ontario, just reach out to me. After this video is posted, after it's live, you're gonna see a link at the bottom that says connect with me. Uh, if you're in Ontario, I'll connect you with my sales team. The reason I like to do that is because you're tuning into these videos because you wanna know about the vehicles and I'm gonna send you someone who can take care of both the deal for you and the vehicle with you and they will treat you the same way I would treat you. So do me a favor, do that. And uh, like I said, also hit subscribe. All right, flip back here. I've got the uh, video up here. You can see the comment section filling up there. Uh, feel free to ask comments and questions at any point. I will take time throughout the video to uh, take your questions, to take, um, you know, to answer them, to do what I can with them. And sometimes I miss a few. So I apologize if I do, uh, but I'll do my best to get as many as I can. And we'll go from there. Uh, 30 seconds left. Somebody asked me about the new uh, Kona N. Is that coming to Canada? My understanding is yes, it is. Uh, obviously, if we have it uh, available to us, we will get it. But uh, I don't have a ton of information other than what's been released on that. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. That's, of course, the Hyundai side of things. Uh, but today we're going to go all Kia, all Carnival, all the time. And real quick, actually, when we get to the three minute mark, I'll cover one little thing. All right, we're at the three minute mark. Let me just show you one little thing. This here is a motorboat. It will not be part of our video. However, it's not really for sale. Although it, everything at a dealership is for sale. The only reason it's here, it, well, who cares why it's here, but it also can be towed by the Carnival. So if you want sort of perspective of how much can be towed, uh, that is easily under the 3,500 pound tow capability of the Carnival. That uh, boat is in here and uh, we won't talk about it other than you guys will probably see it in the background a bunch of times. Uh, has nothing to do with what we're talking about today. So just so you know, it's there. Do me one favor guys, while we're here, yesterday we had like over a hundred likes on this video. Just do me a favor, hit that like button, it helps us out. And uh, I'm gonna ask you a couple times throughout this video. Okay, so let's talk technology. First thing first, I'm gonna get the key in my pocket and I wanna show you the key. Uh, we are on the very smack dead in the middle uh, technology or te dead in the middle car and in the lineup or Carnival, this is a minivan. I'm not supposed to call it a minivan, but it is. Uh, so that's where we are, dead smack in the middle. And I'm just gonna show you the key right now. We have the remote start. We have the hold buttons for the two doors. We have a hold button for the rear trunk as well. And then you have panic button, lock and unlock. That is a proximity key. It's gonna go in my pocket for the rest of this video. Yesterday, we talked about how you can approach the vehicle with a proximity key in your pocket. And just by standing there and waiting, the side door can open. You can do the same thing for the back, the smart tailgate, smart side doors. Uh, what that is, is a feature to do with your smart key. And of course, if you're holding your child and maybe they're squirming and you don't have to, you know, find your keys or find the door handle or anything else. You can just stand there and the door opens. That's a super handy feature. That is something that we can show a little bit later. All right, so what we're gonna do today is I have this secret information here that says Carnival. Um, it says dealer MSRP. This is why we can't show it to you, but it doesn't have any information on there. This is information that came out to us before the vehicle came out. And I just wanna clarify, if you happen to see that on your screen and you see something there that's uh, written down, 
it's very possible that feature could have changed. So I am using that as a general guide today, uh, but if it comes across the screen and you see something that isn't what you thought or isn't uh, accurate, it's possible that this information is incorrect. So I'm gonna keep it mostly off the screen, but just so you know, sometimes people pause the screen and say, it said right on your sheet, and I'm going, well, you know, it is what it is. So again, some of this information is pre-release pre, uh, information. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some of the safety features on the LX and move our way through to talk about what's added. Uh, I was gonna save this video for the top of the line version. The reason I didn't do that is because there's a lot to cover when that vehicle shows up. And like I said, another reason to subscribe to the channel. We'll have this kind of video on that. All right, let's jump in. Let's talk about some of the stuff on this uh, list right here. Okay, first of all, airbags, we've got seven of them, including a driver's knee airbag. Airbag numbers don't really count. They don't usually put a driver's knee airbag in unless they think they need it to pass a specific test. So it probably is a, a needed thing. Uh, so don't worry about counting airbags. Some vehicles have 10 airbags and they're less safe than ones that have six. Uh, but you do have a driver's knee airbag. Forward collision avoidance assist. Now, there's a few different collision avoidance assists on this uh, on this vehicle. And basically what they do is they use a camera here in the front. You can sort of see a little V up there in the center of your screen behind the, uh, well, you can see it right there, right? Uh, that is a camera. Now it is looking out for you uh, for lane keep and lane follow assist, which we'll talk about in a second, but it also looks out for pedestrians and cyclists and vehicles. It is capable of doing all that and it is available on every single uh, trim line of this vehicle. And what it's doing is capable of stopping to avoid a collision with those um, with those types of people, vehicles, that kind of thing. So you have that forward collision avoidance assist. You also have lane follow assist and lane keeping assist. So lane follow assist sees the lane markers in front of you using that same camera. And what it does is it keeps you centered in the lane. It actually steers the car for you, centering itself in the lane. Lane follow assist doesn't have to see, for instance, the right side lane marker if you're on a country road. It can still steer your, uh, your vehicle for you. So if that sounds intimidating, don't let it intimidate you. Most people that I talk to with this, once I explain how it works and they try it out, I always say to them, leave it on for a little bit. Lights just turned off on us. I always say, leave that feature on for a little bit. Uh, see how you like it. Try it for a week and see how you like it. Almost everybody comes back to me and tells me it's one of their favorite features. So the problem with this boat being here is my lights are going to turn off because they don't see me. And that's a problem for me. <laughs> Uh, there we go. So, okay, we're good. So we're going to try to keep those lights on. All right, next thing I want to talk about is uh, driver attention warning. So this vehicle is equipped with a driver attention warning system. We're going to show you that in a second um, that can alert you if you are getting drowsy and it will tell you, hey, you should come back. We can talk about how that works a little bit later. High beam assist as well. You have LED lights on all of the trim lines and the high beams can automatically turn on and stay on. Now they turn off if a vehicle is ahead of you, if a vehicle's approaching you, or if you're in town. A lot of vehicles won't turn off the lights, if the high beams, if they see street lights, and this car does do that. Uh, so what I tend to do in the country roads at night on my personal car is I leave the high beams on all the time. Uh, because what happens is when I'm driving down a country road, where I would have forgotten to turn on the high beams early enough, in other words, I've been driving partially blind, uh, it turns them on as soon as it's safe and it turns them off as soon as it's not safe. And it is a super smart system. It's gonna save you from having a collision, I promise you, it's an awesome system. I can't promise things, that's an asterisk on that promise. All right, so that's rear parking sensors as well. So this van has front parking and rear parking sensors. Um, the lower trim level still has the rear parking sensor. So that is, in addition to the backup camera, you have those little dots back there uh, if you're driving kids around in a minivan, you are, no offense, a distracted driver. I drive my kids all the time, and let's face it, they make some noise, they do some things. So in addition to the backup camera, which will be right there, we'll show you that in a minute, we'll go inside the van in just a second, the backup beepers can warn you by progressively beeping faster if you're approaching something, and a solid beep means you're very close to something. You have those in the back of all the vans, you have it in the front of this EX van here as well. So that is what we're talking about. Tire pressure monitoring systems, we'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, da, 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 da. We'll skip some of the rest of the stuff. Low washer fluid warning, you don't care about that. All right, let's take a look at some of the safety as we jump into the vehicle now, and we'll start about adding some of these features that you get. So again, everything I talked about is on every trim line of van that we have. Now, let's jump in here. I'm gonna flip my page over to the LX Plus model, and we're gonna add some technology features like, we showed this yesterday, the wireless charging feature. Now this is really important because when you have a wireless charging feature like this, you throw your phone in there, you see those little holes in there, that is venting. Well, the reason that's really important is because as we look up over here, 
You have an eight inch display screen here, which is a fairly good size. You can get a bigger screen in bigger vehicles. Um, but the eight inch display screen here, I'm gonna turn the radio down, there we go, uh, has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which means you have navigation through your cell phone, you can have texting abilities, uh, all those things. And what happens is, because your phone is being used and because it's charging, it's gonna create some heat. So you can put it here. Not only will it charge, it will stay cool because, or at least stay more cool because of the venting system and wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. I wanna talk real quickly about it. If you're in a minivan, what are you doing? You're driving your kids around. So you gotta to go to so-and-so's birthday party. You gotta do this and that. You gotta pick up so-and-so used clothes from somebody. We've all done this. I have no idea where anybody lives. I don't know my own town. I don't know the road's names. So when your phone is wirelessly connected to those, um, to those features you can very easy call up your google maps your apple maps whatever you want it to use um just wirelessly you turn this entire eight inch screen into a um into a uh, google maps or apple maps and it makes it way easier so that is my favorite feature and doing it wirelessly means you can call it up at any point which is super helpful all right so when we move to this uh, lx plus trim level which is again one step down from where we are we have the smart tailgate the power sliding doors rear pull-up shades uh, these are comfort features. Where are we for technology? Oh, safety doesn't add anything. So there we go. These are my comfort sheets. Those are basically what we add. You can pause the screen, take a look. I think most of those are accurate. Now we're going to go to the EX model that we're in. And now we start adding some more safety features. So safety features that we're adding in this car. We add blind spot collision avoidance assist. So you can see right there, there's that little triangle there. We talked about this a little bit yesterday, but I want to go over this again really quickly what it is. Of course, you know what blind spot detection is. Most of us know it can detect things in your blind spot, the little light comes on. So anything that says collision avoidance assist, let me talk about what that means really quickly as we hop out here. If you are here and I am driving, let's say right over here, and there's a lane between us, of course, you wanna take that lane as you're signaling, you have no warning or anything like that. I want to take that lane at the same time. So we've all seen this happen. I come in here, you're starting to come over here. The avoidance assist, not, does, not only does it beep at you, but it has the ability to break that front right wheel. What that does, it just turns you a little tiny bit away. It does its best to avoid the collision. And we all know there are so many beeping systems in cars that we've all kind of tuned half of them out anymore. Oh, beep, I wonder what that is, right? Well, you don't have time to think, I wonder what that is when you're turning into the lane that I'm turning into because neither one of us are paying attention. Uh, the avoidance assist is a key thing. So when you see something in a Kia or Hyundai line with avoidance assist, it's capable of steering you away or breaking you out of the way. And that matters. So this EX Plus, not just detection, which is what a lot of our competitors have, but it has the ability to avoid a collision. That saves you on insurance, that saves you on just hassle, because you're not gonna have a minor collision or even a major collision, uh, because it's capable of stopping you from doing that. So that's an important thing there. Rear cross traffic collision avoidance assist. So we talked about the same thing. When I'm backing up, if you think about this for a second, let me just show you right here. Oops, oops, wrong way. Let me just do this again. Flip the camera, here we go. If you are out here, now see Tim's boat is there. Let's say there's something coming from behind Tim's boat. I can't see behind Tim's boat because, you know, there's a blind spot there, there's a wall, and even Tim's boat itself is blocking that doorway there. So if you are coming along behind that boat, or somebody's coming along behind that boat, crossing my path, this car, even though I can't see it in my backup camera, or I can't see it through the window here, the car can still, in many cases, see what's coming. And it's capable of warning you that something's coming when you're backing up by putting a little arrow in your uh, screen. And it's capable of stopping you from avoiding that uh, collision. So that is a nice feature that we have uh, on this uh, system. And then we talked about the forward collision avoidance assist as well. So remember when we had the camera out the front here, looking forward, well, imagine now that I'm in an intersection and I'm turning left, I'm signaling, I'm in the intersection and the light goes yellow and I wanna zip through, but somebody else decides they're gonna gun it through. Well, where am I looking when I'm turning left? I'm looking left, I'm looking to where I'm headed, right? And I may not be looking at the car that all of a sudden, instead of braking for the yellow light, decides to gun it through. This car has junction collision avoidance assist. It's one of the most dangerous collisions in the cities uh, because I'm looking left, I'm trying to complete my turn, someone guns it. Well, if someone guns it, this car is capable of seeing that and stopping. And again, your eyes are looking where you're turning, your eyes aren't looking at what might be coming from in front of you. And this car is capable of seeing what might be coming in front of you. And that junction collision avoidance assist is a really big feature that's gonna keep you safer. All right, rear seat reminder with sensor. Now, I'm gonna try to show this. See that right there behind me there? I'm gonna try to show it with the wrong camera here. That right there. This van in the highest trim level 
has a camera system that can look at your rear passengers. That's not what I just showed you. A lot of people think it is. So they'll think, oh, the lower trim level has cameras. That's not it. What that system does is it can see if there's a passenger in the back seat, not through a camera, but through a sensor. Uh, if there's a passenger back seat and you leave this car, you have a cell phone app that warns you. You have many other ways that can warn you. If you leave someone in the back seat of this car, you will get a warning. So you're not going to leave your young baby in there when you're exhausted and you just want to get to the work or get to the grocery store or whatever you got to do. Uh, the car will either set an alarm off or do other things. Or if you have that Uvo intelligence, which is free for the first three years, it's going to warn you right there on a notification on your cell phone. Hey, you left someone in the car. So really smart feature there. Uh, safe exit assist is one thing I didn't mention as well. Imagine I'm sitting here. I parallel park on the side of a road. My rear seat passengers are, let's face it, they're probably children. And they're itching to get out. And there's a car coming up beside me here you know, flying by on the road because I've parallel parked on the side of the road. Well, this um, safe exit assist, there's two levels of safe exit assist and safe exit warning. Uh, safe exit warning uh, will warn you in a beeping sound if someone's coming. Safe exit assist is what this van has. And that will essentially apply the child lock to the door handle. They will not be able to open that door handle if someone's ripping through beside you or driving beside you. It's just uses the blind spot detection, says, hey, let's leave your kids in the car and not let them out in the traffic. Safe exit warning. Really good. All right, technology. We'll talk about some technology stuff in a second. Um, and uh, there's an intelligent speed limit assist uh, um, button. So yeah, let's just tell you what intelligent speed limit assist is. There was a little bit of confusion about head office. Some people say it works with um, the cruise control. I couldn't get it to activate with the cruise control. I do have a picture I could show you on my computer, but I want to show you that in here because a lot of people come across it or going to come across it and they're not going to be able to find it in their um, owner's manual as easily. So driver assistance, speed limit, and then there's the offset. This is the picture I used as a screenshot. Speed limit assist speed limit warning and off. So what this does is it allows you uh, with the camera to see, let me just go right back here. Let me go back again. Uh, let's go to something that's usable. There we go. Let's just use that. Nope. Let's use this. Let's go down the speed speedometer, just to make it easy. Imagine just your speedometers up there. So what that speed limit assist does is it puts up a little symbol here of the, um, of the speed limit sign when it sees it. So how does it see it? Well, ooh, that's a little too much there. How does it see it? Again, there's a camera behind the mirror. It, when it sees a speed limit sign, it'll throw it up in this little area here. And it'll look exactly like the speed limit signs in your town. The same look, same thing. Now what happens is you can set that speed limit assist to just pop up and warn you, hey, it's 60 kilometers an hour here, if it's 60, it's 80, it's 100, whatever it is. So you can pop up that uh, little piece, it shows there. Now the speed limit assist, when we go back to that menu item, oops, sorry about that. Let's go back here. Driver assistance, speed limit, speed limit offset. So you can increase it by five or 10 or go down by five or 10. What that means is if I'm, if it's a 60 kilometer an hour limit and I've set it to 65, in other words, five kilometers over, that speed limit sign that displays won't turn red until 65. In other words, five kilometers over. So you can set it at whatever you want. Um, it doesn't seem to be something that works with cruise control yet, although I've had some discussion with head office. They think it works with cruise control. I think they're mistaken. I think they're mistaking something with the uh, higher trim level when it has navigation-based cruise control with highway drive assist. That's a different story. Uh, anyway, so we've got that. It is in this car. Intelligent speed limit assist. Uh, just gives you a little extra safety thing. Um, power passenger seat. Yeah, home look mirror. I want to talk about the uh, Uvo Intelligence before we go too far. So this is this trim level. Let me just jump out of the car for one second. Uvo Intelligence. We've talked about this before. It is a cell phone app. Uh, it's very difficult for me to demonstrate on some cars, although I have done a demonstration of some of the features on other videos. Uh, we have not activated this on my phone, and I actually f film with my personal phone when I do these YouTube videos. So Uvo Intelligence does a lot of things. The big thing people like is it has the ability to say, remote start your car. So this is a preliminary sheet, but this is what we are expected to see in this car. We can do things like remote door unlock and lock, remote start with climate control. So we can adjust the temperature, the front and back to frost, the heated steering wheel, the heated seats, and the cooled seats in ap applicable levels. Um, with that, we can remote start, uh, cancel, we can turn the horn and lights and flashlights, we can find the car, we can adjust the profile, uh, vehicle window status. So in other words, if we left a window or door open, uh, this is great on a minivan. If your kids leave a window open, it's like, hey, a window's open. Uh, my 
sometimes my family leaves the trunk half shut. Now this one's a power trunk, so it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, but you get a little warning, hey, the trunk is open, the window's open, the door's open, the door's not locked. So when your kids go out to grab their thing that they forgot in the van, they come back in, you're gonna get a notification on your phone saying the door's not locked. So some of these features are there, location-based search, uh, battery discharge notification, those kind of things, um, all kinds of stuff in there. So uh, UVO best route guidance, um, collision notifications, roadside assistance, SOS emergency, and that rear seat occupant alert. So again, that system that tells you if there's somebody in the rear seat, that's what I see on the bottom here. Uh, it will send a notification to your phone saying, hey, there's someone in the rear seat of your vehicle, you left it there. So that's what's going on. All right, we've got more to cover. I'm gonna go through that in a second, but we're about 20 minutes in out of a 30 minute video. I'm gonna take your questions now. I get it, not entertaining video, uh, but people tend to like these or some people tend to like these. So uh, if you wanna hit the like button, that would be super helpful right now. I'm gonna take your questions if there are any, if not, we'll get right back to where we were and we'll keep going through. All right, let me flip the camera around. You can look at me for a change. I don't know if that's a change or not. Okay, rear collision assist works amazing for my Kia Soul. Saved me one time by braking for me. Bingo, yeah, huge, huge feature. I also have a school. Soul scared me the first time and hit the brakes because it was all of a sudden a pedestrian approaching on a bike. There we go. You guys are selling this stuff for me. I don't even have to talk about it. Okay, keep moving on. No blind spot, not on all levels. The collision detection also uses front radar. Okay, what are we talking about? Uh, does it have lights on the doors pointing to the floor when the front doors open? I believe the upper trim levels have some lights that point to that way. Um, does Kia's five-year warranty cover all electronics? No. Uh, things like the radio are under a less than five-year warranty. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the specifics on this video because, to be honest, I just don't have them all memorized, but Kia's website does have a very good information on their warranty thing. Just bought a Kia KX K5EX thanks to your videos. It helped me pick my car. Thanks, Peter. Cool. Very cool. All right, let's keep going through. Do all Carnival trim levels come with the blind spot monitoring? No. So that is on, I believe... The EX and above, or is that just that the blind spot monitoring with avoidance assist? That's a great question, and I'm trying to find it. I think it's just the EX and above. Yes, unless I'm mistaken, it's EX and above. So we can double check the specs later, but that is my memory right there from it. Uh, vehicle's great looking for a van. It really is. I like the look of it for a van. Can the carnival tow the boat? Yes, it can. Uh, there we go. Just going back up to the top here. That's why we've got boat questions here. Okay. Oh, my light just turned off again, so let me just go walk by that because this boat is in my way. Okay, we're going to keep going back through. Radio and nav are only a three-year, 36,000 kilometer. Uh, 36,000 kilometer sounds like short to me. I thought it was longer than that, but maybe you're right. Um, anyways, we'll keep going through here. I want to talk about the headlights as well. We talked about the high beam, but I want to point out that every headlight, these are little things that the specs don't mention. Um, you can see here I have just uh, the regular low beam headlights on. Uh, they are very bright and white. This one happens to have the fog lights as well. I always recommend on something like the Kia Seltos or the Kia Soul, where you have the option of going with an LED light or the regular halogen light, I always say if you can spring for it, go for the uh, uh, LED lights because they are brighter, uh, but they are whiter. And this video doesn't really show the whiteness of these. Sometimes they look a little yellow. Um, but you get more of a daylight color. And I gotta be honest with you, when you're driving down the road, the clarity of things, the way your eyes can pick things out with this color, it really does a good job of, um, your eyes are familiar with what you see. If you see a rabbit or a raccoon or something like that, right away you can pick that out. And that color, because it's closer to daylight, makes it easier for your brain to quickly pick out what's there. It's a really nice thing, and every single minivan, ha every single carnival, has those uh, has at least this level of LED lights. There's an upgrade LED light on the higher trim levels as well. Okay, I'm gonna take you through a couple settings here. Uh, just because I want to show you some technology stuff. Uh, a couple of little things that I really like. I mentioned those doors that open automatically. The passenger seat here, you can create some space. We're going to show this in our passenger space video. Uh, but you have a powered seat, which you can move here. And you can tilt here and adjust. You can see the USB ports in the back of every seat. That's a kind of a cool technology thing there. I want to show you a couple of little things that maybe they don't show you in the uh, other videos or other... Um, other things that you read online. Uh, so things like the climate system here, uh, it's a little bit, seems a little tricky. So the climate system, you can recirculate the air, which is kind of cool, upon washer fluid use. Now, if you've ever seen these modern washer fluids, they use a lot of alcohol type smelling stuff. So what, you, what I have it set up to is I've checked that checkbox. So when I use the washer fluid um, to wash the windshield, instead of having that alcohol type smell fill the cabin, which nobody loves. It'll just recirculate the air as soon as I use it and then it'll clear up later. So that's kind of a cool feature there. Automatic ventilation is a feature I haven't seen in any of our other vehicles. The auto dehumidify 
Totally normal. We've seen that before. Scheduled ventilation. Even if the car is off, if you've lived with a minivan before, they could pick up funky smells. We've taken a few, uh, few on trade. They've got some funky smells. So think about it. Your car can now just do a quick little refresh in the middle of the night. Just ventilate itself out, uh, even when you're not in there, which isn't a bad idea. And you can schedule it for whatever you want, uh, even if the car's not running. Just a little quick ventilation thing. So pretty cool thing. I've turned it off for now because I don't want to use a ton of battery on a vehicle that may not be driven fairly regularly. We'll see. I'm sure this one will sell very quickly. Uh, but that is something you can do. So I can actually show you there. If you turn it on here, you can just choose it. So automatically ventilates the cabin at the scheduled time. Ventilation occurs while the vehicle is off. So if it's off at 12 a.m., uh, which it will be, then uh, what you can do is... Uh, you know, set up for, let's go to, you know, I don't know, let's set up for 11 a.m. instead or 11 p.m. or whatever we want to do. Um, it'll auto-ventilate, which is pretty cool. Um, so right now I'm going to leave it off. Uh, we're going to hit OK there. Sorry. I'm going to leave that checkbox off because I don't want it to do that right now. But it's kind of a cool feature just to keep the smell of this vehicle smelling normal. Defog to frost options here. Uh, you have auto defog and defrost and auto um, defog as well. Uh, what that does, again, is just it saves you from touching buttons when your windows start to fog or the rear windows start to fog a little bit. Um, it'll just keep it, make it easier. Well, that white balance is really messing with my, it's my red shirt, I think. Uh, but yeah, it'll just make the room, uh, the whole vehicle, you won't have to find the button. Oh, it's starting to fog up. The vehicle takes care of itself. Again, you're just going to be able to focus on driving. If you've got kids in the car, you can focus on them. So I really like that feature. Climate features here, um, it seems like a buried thing. You remember I told you yesterday you can lock out the rear climate because there is a rear climate control system uh, that they can control if I turned it on, which I will do right here. Uh, hold on a second here. Uh, whoop, there we go. Nope, I'm hitting the wrong buttons while looking at the thing. Rear climate. There we go. So you can see the lights there. Um, that system. Now, if you don't want your kids playing with that, there's a couple different ways to turn that on or off. Um, where I came to is the hard way to find it. So I just want to show you there. So this through this feature here, climate features, rear climate controls, rear climate off, that's not how you're going to find it. What you're going to do is you're going to be at your home screen here. You're going to pull up your, where am I? Oops, got to look through my hands here. Going to pull up your rear climate here. And uh, when you do that, it brings it up over here. And then you're just going to hit the menu. And if you want to lock out the controls to lock the rear people out, you can do that. Or if you want to go to the climate settings, which is where we were, we just came there a different way. You could find it all there. So all of these things are nice little climate features that maybe you don't find in your regular cars. Uh, so maybe give a thumbs up if you hadn't thought of some of those features. Uh, I like the display here too, because as you, the heat turns on, you can see. And as we get the air conditioning coming back on, you'll see there as well. Just cooler air, warmer air. Gives you a nice little visual and you can direct it wherever you want for your rear passengers. And of course there's fan speed there. We're gonna set it to the auto setting and let it do its own thing. So actually I'm gonna turn the climate system off just to save some battery. We're gonna go back to the setup here. A couple more things I wanna show you. Uh, the sound is pretty cool too. Um, sound tuning, that kind of thing. There's all sorts of stuff here. Um, you can see, you can change. Obviously that's your uh, equalizer, which is pretty normal. What I like is some of this stuff. Driving safety priority, so it lowers all the other volumes when a driving safety, in other words, when you get a driving warning, it's going to lower your radio volume. Parking safety priority, same thing. Parking beepers, it's going to lower your other stuff. Uh, system volumes, subsystem volumes, speed dependent volume control, startup limit, which is pretty cool. This is what I like. Okay, so um, you come home at night, you've got the music blaring, it's just you, you needed a break from the kids, we all hear you, I'm with you, uh, and all of a sudden you get your music just blaring away. Next morning you get in, you take your little precious little child, put them in the back seat, you start the car up and wham, the radio's super loud. Don't do that with this car. You don't have to do that with this car because you don't have to remember to turn it down. Startup volume limit, you can just set that startup volume to limit uh, so it's not gonna blow um, like crazy or blow like, um, it's not gonna be super noisy and wake them up. So you can put that there. The other thing is sound tuning in here. Oops, sorry, guidance, oh, where am I? Radio noise, that's not it either. Oh, there we go, no, guidance. Sorry, I'm looking for one thing. That's not it either. Sound tuning there, no. System volumes, sorry, system volumes. Subsystem volumes right here. So you can change the beep or the ringtone or the voice prompts or the alerts. All of those can be set differently. So again, the radio might be a certain volume, but you want your ringtone to come in nice and loud or maybe a little quieter. Or the voice prompts, you want them to be a little louder, a little quieter. So you can customize a lot of this stuff, including turning the beep on and off on the system. I just find these really helpful. Uh, sometimes certain phones, the ringtone is not very loud, so you can change that. So nice little technology features all in here. And again, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Uh, so you have some volume systems in there as well. 
Uh, you know what? We're at 30 minutes almost. So we're going to go back to the questions. I'm going to make sure I take your questions now. Uh, if there are things that you want to know more, we'll get to that. Again, we're going to have this van in here again. We're going to have other vans like this in here again. So you can hit the subscribe button. Uh, big thing is the next trim level up, the EX Plus and the SX, you get bigger screens, complete uh, change in the look of the dash. Uh, you're getting a lot more technology. So we're going to do technology videos on that car as well, because that might be something that appeals to you. Uh, and we'll go through there. So 30 minutes in, let me just take your questions. I don't want to take too much of your time. Maybe we'll leave it on here. Uh, oh, somebody said bye already. All right, we're gone. All right, kids can be creative. Would there be a locking setting so kids cannot press those side buttons of the front seats? Uh, no, but that's a good point. The kids in the middle row seat, they can. Now, that's a good point. So let's just say what we're talking about. Somebody said kids can be creative. So let me just show you here. If the kids are getting creative and they're sitting back here and they're touching those seats, there's not much you can do except for you can throw them in this middle seat right there, which you can see can slide all the way forward to be equal to these seats or you can push them all the way back. So if they're doing that, you set them in the middle seat, you push them all the way back. But yeah, good point. If you're a kid in the back seat and you want to mess with mom, that's how you're going to do it. So uh, don't say I never help anybody out. At least the kids can't say that. All right, let me just, that was a good question. That was funny. Yeah, three years, 60,000 kilometers, somebody corrected with the uh, warranty for the radio. So that sounds more like it. Three years, 60,000, that sounds more familiar. Auto defog, my 2019 Sorento. Okay, that's uh, X level lights, door handle doesn't shoot down to the ground. Sliding doors have a light when you open, remote start. Okay, so a lot of people giving some information there. Uh, not related to the carnival. We'll get to that Santa Cruz question in just a second. We'll go off topic in a minute. Let me just make sure I get all the carnival questions out of the way. I'm late, but has Peter mentioned if the van has an auto shut off, like if running? Okay, so many of our cars do have an shut off. Uh, so what that means is if the car is left idling or even with the on position but not running, uh, usually the default is 30 minutes and it turns off. This van didn't show up like that. I haven't seen it in the settings, but I haven't dug through to see that. So Seltos, uh, some of our other cars, K5, they show up with that car with that setting set. Uh, these cars didn't have that setting set, so I haven't dug through, but I'm thinking they probably don't have it, which would be interesting. I don't know. I thought that was something they were moving to. So again, the ability to turn itself off uh, looks like this car didn't have it, at least now it was set up. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, just bought a key. Okay, so we got that. All right, I think that's about all. If I missed your question, go ahead, ask it right now. Somebody has a Santa Cruz question. What's the ETA on the Santa Cruz? Uh, Santa Cruz, I'm looking at this summer. I desperately want to see that car. So as soon as it shows up, I will have it here. Um, but yeah, so that's all I know about the Santa Cruz. And uh, hey, the lights just turned off again. They probably got a 15 minute warning on them. Maybe, who knows, maybe 10 minutes. All right, so we're gonna leave it there, guys. I wanna thank everyone for joining. We made it to 38 likes, not a whole lot of likes, but we had a good amount of people in here. Uh, again, if you wanna know more about this video, more about this vehicle, excuse me, uh, we're gonna have a lot more. And again, tomorrow we're probably gonna go back to the Hyundai lineup, uh, hopefully get the Tucson back here, I think. There's some other trim levels I can show you there. Uh, we'll dig through that. And uh, again, if there's something you wanna see, Kia Hyundai lineup, let me know. We'll pull it in the video bay here. We'll do more about it. Uh, we're gonna continue to bring the Carnival back in as these new trims show up because we haven't got all the trims on, uh, uh, on uh, film right now. We're going to do the same thing with some of the Hyundai lineup. I know the Sonata people are asking about different trim lines of the Sonata. We'll do that. Sonata hybrid, those kind of things. So a lot of stuff coming up here. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. Helps us out. Uh, and again, if you want to watch a video, hit that like button. It helps us out as well. Thanks everybody for watching. We will talk to you again soon.